the adventures into the Tritonverse. The journey thus far of my Triton. Everything from the repairs to the modifications. In the beginning, I look for my first ever 4x4. This is the day I bought the Triton. I was such a bimbo, I only knew what the engine and the battery was and pretty much nothing else. And I had no one who knew what they were doing to check the car. So this guy had the greatest opportunity of his life <laughs> to sell the car to a stupid bimbo. Because I was still a learner, I really wasn't confident in even trying to drive this car. It was kind of intimidating. I didn't really want to ruin something. So the guy selling it drove it to a mechanic. The mechanic said that the car was great, that there was nothing wrong with it. The only thing they were unsure of was the timing belt, and that's about it. He completely failed to mention the gearbox. I mean, what kind of mechanic doesn't drive the car into the workshop to check the car? You gotta put it into first gear, right? You gotta put it into first gear to move it. Ah, I feel so stupid that I didn't just test drive it. Should have taken another chunk out of the price because of that. But I still love the car, still really grateful for it. I did not want to sell it. I was so excited, out of my mind. Honestly, I couldn't believe that it was real and I kept thinking, oh, something bad's gonna happen or I'm not gonna be able to buy it or something. Just, just expecting something terrible to happen. But hey, it came and I had it. So I had a car and it was a track and a full, full drive exactly what I've been wanting. I fixed a small pin so the sunglass holder would actually open and close properly because it was uh, broken and I watched a YouTube video. I had a lot of help from my family as well to try to figure things out. And my first time off-roading and my first off-road scar. I hit a tree, had no backup camera and it was exactly in line with the back pillar of the canopy so boop. I had my brother help me install the head unit. He also helped install the reverse camera and new kicker coaxial speakers into the doors. And he tried to diagnose some of the issues like whether or not the timing belt was recently replaced. It was immediately noticed that the intercooler pipe hose was just covered in tears. It looked pretty much exactly like that, but with multiple tears. So we replaced the intercooler pipe hose with a metal one. We just kind of pieced together a bunch of um, piping from super cheap auto. Something that I just can't understand is that when I first had the intercooler pipe change, I got a lot of power back and I could finally feel the biting point when you're at a red light and you're slowly lifting your foot off the clutch at the biting point, you could feel it dip down. That only lasted about three days and since then I've never felt that ever again in the car. The closest I got to that was a dip to the side and that was with the old worn shocks. This is what attributed to me desperately trying to find out the power issue later on. Oh, and the most important mods, I guess. That was the gearbox oil. Could see little metallic bits inside it. I mean, this is not for my car again, so uh, it looked just like that though. And when the gearbox was eventually taken out, thick metal paste was coming out, pretty much just like this. So that's the new gearbox in and it drove like butter compared to the last one. In the meantime, I got the timing belt done. I decided to just pay 50 bucks to check out what was up with the manifolds. And to my untrained bimbo brain, I thought that this was fine. Oh God, we'll see what's to come. I took a whole bunch of different pictures of the car, basically inside and out, everything that I could somewhat recognize. My boyfriend at the time, who I was dating online, uh, bought me a cold air intake. So I had no idea how useless they really were, but he tried to help me put it on and he guided me to taking out the air box. So that was actually a very interesting experience, taking out some of the intercooler piping, intercooler pipe hoses and the air box hoses and the air box itself. And I realized that the turbo had a lot of oil in gunk around it. He also guided me to taking out the battery. You know what, I don't even remember why we took out the battery. Oh, in the process, um, I found a loose bolt 
in the Benji Bay area was crazy. There was a time where I didn't drive it that much and the battery eventually died and it had to be replaced. Then after a long holiday, the whole car kind of behaved completely different. It was just continuously slowly losing power every time I drove it and it had terrible surging on idle. Then thus began my journey to try and figure out what the power issue was. I started off with a good service, but that didn't really fix anything. I brought it to another mechanic who replaced the EGR valve because that was apparently faulty. And that's, that's a joke for many people out there would laugh at that. But surprisingly, it made the car more responsive. I actually felt a difference. But I still had really bad surging on idle. So after a while, we decided to take the car to a proper full drive mechanic instead of these other large chain mechanics. This one knew full drives, or at least that's what it looked like since outside of the shop there were just full drives lined up. Since then it was about a year and a half since the last major thing was done to the car, so I had a lot of time researching, a lot of time watching full drive videos. The car literally felt like limp mode pretty much. Almost worse than limp mode, less responsive and everything. That's why I went for a proper full drive mechanic to solve this power issue. They cleaned out the manifolds and they installed a new intercooler because the intercooler looked pretty stuffed. They adjusted the valve clearances. And after that, I mean, the responsiveness was just crazy, but it still lacked that push, that acceleration. And here's the brand new high performance diesel intercooler that was installed. Look at the size of that. It's just like double the size. Look at that shit intercooler right next to it. Jeez. But take a note here. They never noticed the tire wear right here. I'll get back to that later in the video. Not to mention how many times I specified. Before you do all that, check the power issue. They did their own thing. They went ahead with the manifold clean and the replacement of the intercooler without actually checking what is causing the power issue. And the aftermath of the mechanic. Damages, scratches, totally new intercooler pipe hoses already completely scratched up from day one. They also managed to bash at the bash plate. I mean, why couldn't they just let me bash the bash plate? Why did it have to be them? And I literally figured out why they did that, and it's due to improperly placing the bash plate and bolting it in. I literally experienced the same thing and was about to pull it on the same spot that they had pulled it and realized that they did it because they were too lazy to unbolt it and properly place it. So now I've got a strip bolt socket and I have no idea what to do. How am I going to install a new bash plate? Their response was, hey, it's the shitty stock bash plate. I mean, who cares? There was nothing wrong with it. Why did you have to smash it up? Three days later, I saw the first ever leak that I've ever seen in this car. It was leaking oil, and I took a look at it, and later on I learned that it was the rear main seal and front main seal. I think I can only attribute this maybe to the catch can being installed, but that's still up to debate because it does look like it's been leaking for a while by some of these pictures. I also took uh, pictures before sending it in to the mechanic again just to see whether or not they'll damage something. The second visit. This time, the timing belt was replaced because apparently the last mechanics didn't do a good job and the water pump was leaking and it was a timing belt kit from eBay, so I don't doubt that its quality is very questionable. There were some parts that apparently were never replaced from the last mechanic, some of these spinny pulley things, whatever they call, and they apparently fixed the front main seal. But wait, what the fuck? This isn't even my car. Why did they send me this picture? Look at this. I don't have a solid axle. I don't have BF Goodrich tires. Ah, there's my gearbox. So these are all the gearbox parts that they said were damaged by the other mechanics. They replaced the clutch fork and whatever else these things, I still don't know them. And they installed a brand spanking new Extreme Outback heavy duty clutch. 
and they replaced all the transfer case mounts, the gearbox mount, because apparently that was all bad. I have heard that the transfer box mount is kind of made shitty and is supposed to be like that. Oh, and I have no idea what's up with this video. They're just zooming into a bolt. I mean, I guess it's because he told me that there were a bunch of bolts missing. Engine compression was done, and that's the vehicle on the dyno, getting a tune after all that. So as far as I understood by what he explained is the pink line is before all of the repairs, the red line is after all the repairs, and the green line is after the actual tune. Although it doesn't really make much sense because how could you only make two horsepower? One thing that I learned is check the sensors. It seems the sensors will create a lot of issues. They replace quite a few sensors on my vehicle. And of course, the aftermath. Engine light. They told us to go to an auto sparky. With just a little bit of exploration. I found out it was the throttle body sensor being unplugged that caused the engine light to be on. Telling us to go to an auto sparky for us and me telling them in the face what it was and them getting really mad. Dude, even the air box wasn't closed properly. Even the o-rings that went around the intercooler pipes were discovered later on to be stripped. And the car was still leaking, but it was leaking heavier than it did before from the front main seal. And guess what they told me? I had to wait until after New Year for them to do it. I had this done in November. Later on, it was also discovered that I had no coolant thermostat. How did the previous mechanics miss this? It was also discovered that the transfer case oil seemed to be dirty. Also, a new noise from the clutch. I mean, come on, what the fuck is this? They told me it was normal. Oh, and the tires. I guess nobody noticed the tires yet. Oh, and they plugged one of the tires because it had a nail in it. And they still failed to notice. But hey, at least they fixed the power issue. She accelerates like a beast in first and second gear. But later on, after a few fixes from the new mechanic, it ran even better. The third visit. They did all this under warranty. Apparently it was something that was next to the original thing that was... I mean, I don't even understand. It's whatever this thing is that was leaking. And of course, we can't go without a good aftermath. This speaks for itself. We were promised a degrease, and this is what we got. <laughs> Degreased my ass. We even went to another mechanic and we just had a good look at everything from underneath. And we had false diagnoses from this mechanic. I mean, I'm not even going to talk about this mechanic. It was just, they were diagnosing shit with oil being everywhere. But I mean, one thing stands is that if you say that you're going to degrease, then yeah. That shouldn't have happened. Oh my god. I wipe that front man. Wipe that front man. And of course, uh, the tyres and suspensions go unnoticed by everyone. And the steering wheel vibrations. Oh. I mean, just hear this. I think I had the loudest tyres in the entirety of Australia. I mean, the tyres were so insanely messed up and worn. We later discovered that the shocks destroyed the tyres. God, is this cancer. Dude. Yeah, because my suspension sucked. And after that third visit, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah.
And then me just trying to figure shit out. I mean, I have no idea what I'm doing. The shoddy tune left me with consistent limp modes if I plugged in the subtle body sensor. And then, fourth visit to rectify the clutch, and they finally degrease it! Holy shit, how long did it take him? I actually love the way that they worked with me on this day. This was like one of two times that they actually engaged with me and yeah that was nice but it's the last time i'm going there they were sick of me and i was sick of them later on it was also pointed out that the valve clearances weren't even done properly and the amount they charged me is ridiculous i didn't trust them so i went onto a triton facebook group and asked questions about basically everything that they did and in doing so, it attracted their attention and they decided to give me a refund of $2,000, but that was apparently for the shoddy tune. I mean, there's such a long list of things that these, that happened with that mechanic. I mean, I can't state some things because I don't have the knowledge, so I cannot prove that they are right and wrong. I literally am just backed up by the opinions of other mechanics and more trusted people. You can judge for yourself if you know. Oh, time for a new mechanic. The Grand Master of Triton. Stop pissing out, that's for sure, but... Yep. His name was Luke Crane and he got straight into the point. We went there for an hour and he immediately used the diagnostics tool and everything that we asked the previous mechanics to do and they never did. They never showed us. He did it right in front of us. Gave us all the straight answers right there on the spot. No bullshit. And I decided to do the Dobinson's MRA suspensions with him. The previous mechanics quoted around $8,000 for this suspension upgrade. Well, his was just a little above 5000 Still expensive, but these are expensive shocks. Top of the range, Dobinson's. The satisfaction of the lift. My car's gonna have extra boost. Meanwhile, we upgraded from the single 12-inch sub that we had to dual 12-inch subs. They are the Kicker Comp R subs. In this song, When we were wiring in the first subwoofer, I don't know what happened, but the airbag light just didn't want to go away after that. But thanks to the Triton Master, he fixed that airbag light problem, whereas the other mechanics couldn't figure it out. Yeah, it's only gotten worse. And those were my old shocks. Just look at that. They don't even return. They're supposed to but they don't. Look at that. Good riddance to old shitty stock suspension. And then, three days later, new tires. Finally, no more shitty wobbing noise. Oh, look at that. Ain't she looking glorious? The before and after. Stock suspension versus Dobinson's MRA with 33 inch tires. But, sadly, the vibration issues were still there, even after the four tyre shops that I visited. Tyre shop number one. They balanced it about four times, and I visited about five times. They tried to figure it out, but they could Every shop kept blaming it on different things, so... I had a mechanical check it out and it was thoroughly checked. He even took time out of his busy schedule to really try to find out why the steering wheel was vibrating. And that's without any extra charge. And the conclusion was the balance. So after the 50 billion balance, yeah, still vibrated. And every time I came in, there was a new thing to balance. It was just seemingly infinitely out of balance. And the second tyre shop was completely useless and uh, just blamed it on the tail shop and didn't even bother balancing. 
And then the third shop did the most progress out of all the shops, almost completely getting rid of the vibrating. Yeah, it's got no weights on it, so... And then I really tried to fix it, so I went to a fourth shop and I just... Yeah, it speaks for itself. But apparently it was out of balance again. I decided to give up on that for a bit until I get some stock tires to test it out, which I still haven't done, and we'll probably post a video on an update on that. After the initial tire shop visit, I had to accommodate the 33 inch tires because I only had a 2 inch lift and not a 3 inch lift and no body lift. So I did some uh, DIY mechanic skills right here. I managed to screw in the bit of plastic that was just kind of hanging there into a fold of metal behind this plastic. And the front, it's, it, the front, I don't even want to talk about the front. I no mud flap shall be left behind. I did my own uh, DIY cutting of the mud flaps so they would fit. It's horrible and cringy, but it does the job. Who says you can't fit mud flaps with 33 inch tires? Psh. Oh, let's just get back to the, the sound of progress. It's only getting worse, even while driving. We can hear it. And the Grand Triton Master points this out. Squeaky squeak. <laughs> Me trying to replicate what he did? I'm learning. Yeah. Blue smoke. And, out of the blue, for some reason, I started to have difficulty shifting in first and rarely in second. I don't know why. Me just pointing out something that might be a problem, but I have no idea. Just me trying to mechanic. Just trying to understand, really having no idea what the issue could be. Why is it leaking? And then the Grand Master gives me a gift. The coolant bottle. It had a little tear in it. So I decided that I'll tear everything apart there and get the airbox out and everything and install a new coolant bottle. My mechanic skills hard at work right here. Oh, there's something I know. Bad O-ring again. Oh, pull up bottle. Where I'm fucking retarded. <laughs> but eventually it was all sorted and I got a shiny new corn bottle. So that sums all the problems up. Who knows what's gonna pop up? I guess I'll just make a short videos on those, but now I guess you have a little bit of a history of everything that I've had to go through and it might help you with your Triton journey or whatever you might have journey thing. So I hope this was a uh, help, I guess. And a bit of my adventure with the uh, mechanics. Yeah, find one, find the right one and stick with it. <laughs> I have chosen Luke Crane because he seems like he's the Triton master. You can join his Facebook Triton group by the name of a West Coast Triton Club. 